Hello everyone. Our topic for today is induction of labor. This is stimulation of contractions before spontaneous onset of labor to be very specific before spontaneous onset of labor and not patients who are already in labor. The indications are conditions where benefits of induction outweigh benefits of pregnancy continuation for the mother, baby or both like pregnancy associated hypertension, oligohydramnios, postum pregnancy, rupture of membranes without labor and medical disorders like chronic hypertension and diabetes. The contraindications are conditions that preclude vaginal delivery. These could be maternal like placenta previa, uterine scar with risk of rupture, cephalopelvic disproportion, active genital herpes and CA cervix. Fetal contraindications are macrosomia, hydrocephalus causing CPD, malpresentations and fetal distress. In fact, any indication for cesarean is a contraindication for induction of labor. A recently introduced term is elective labor induction. This is offering elective induction to low risk well dated nulli para at 39 weeks, but the woman should meet arrived trial criteria. Once decided on induction of labor, we have to assess the favorability or inducibility of the cervix for likelihood of successful induction. This is done by Bishop score. If it's a high or a favorable score it means increased chances of success and we can directly proceed with induction of labor for unfavorable scores we should plan a pre-induction cervical ripening before proceeding to induction of labor pre-induction cervical ripening is done with pharmacological agents like pge2 and pge1 pge2 is given in the form of a gel or in a dose of 0.5 milligram six hourly up to three doses in 24 hours placed intracervically. The insert is placed in posterior fornix. It has a dosage of 10 mg which releases 0.3 mg per hour and it is removed once the patient goes in labor or after 12 hours. PGE1 or mesoprostol is taken as an off-label use in a dosage of 25 microgram which channel or 50 to 100 microgram oral every 3 to 6 hours. Besides this, Mechanical methods of pre-induction cervical ripening are Foley's catheter with or without extra amniotic saline installation and hygroscopic dilators. If the score was good and favorable, we can proceed directly with induction of labor. And in case of pre-induction cervical ripening, we attempt induction after ripening of cervix. This induction can be done by Oral or vaginal meets suprostol given in the same dosage and schedule as for cervical ripening. We can also proceed with amniotomy or ARM and surgical induction or membrane stripping and sweeping. But the most commonly used agent is intravenous oxytocin infusion. How do you prepare an intravenous oxytocin infusion? Oxytocin is available in 1 ml vials which contain 5 units of oxytocin. A typical infusate is made of 5 units mixed into 500 ml of crystalloid that is NS or RL or dextrose solution. This gives a concentration of 5 units in 500 ml converted to 5000 milli international units in 500 ml that is equal to 10 milli international units per ml. So if you set on an infusion pump and you deliver 1 ml, you are giving 10 milli international units in 1 ml. If infusion pump is not available, then 1 ml is equal to 20 drops is equal to 60 micro drops, giving 10 milli international units per minute. So how do you decide how many micro drops or drops or ml that is decided on the basis of a low dose regime or a high dose regime? If you are taking on to a low dose regime, You'll start with 0.5 to 2 milli international units per minute. Reassess your patient every 15 to 40 minutes and give increments of 1, 2, 4 or up to 30 milli international units per minute after 15 to 40 minutes. If you are starting with a high dose regime, you begin the infusion at 4 to 6 milli international units per minute. Reassess your patient from 15 to 40 minutes and then give an increment of 3 to 6 milli international units per minute. The goal is to attain uterine activity sufficient enough to cause cervical change and fetal descent but avoid fetal distress. In case there is a tachycystole or a non-reassuring fetal heart rate, you have to stop oxytocin and restart at half the dose with half the increment or plan a cesarean section. The risks with oxytocin are uterine rupture and water intoxication. The risks of labor induction in general are chorionitis, uterine rupture and PPH from 
यू ट्रेन अटोनी थैंक यू